The third stanza consists of only one line. The poets sang only of the floods. What a brilliant stanzaic pattern. The poem has a short opening stanza. This is followed by a rather long second stanza. And now we have a third stanza which comprises only one line. I am sure that the painstaking poet that he was, Ekiramanujan, would have arrived at this extremely powerful stensaic pattern only after taking an enormous effort. The third stanza goes, the poets sang only of the floods. The idea of the third stanza is to reinforce the callousness of the poets, to reinforce the concept of the callousness of the poets initiated in the first stanza. The poets sang only of the floods. They want the river to look beautiful. They are not in the least concerned about the sufferings of ordinary people. And hence, they write only of the floods. They write of the Waigai only when it floods. The poet tries to establish a conflict, a contrast between religion, tradition, culture, society and above all literature on one side and reality on the other. The poet uses reality, the stark reality, the shocking reality of the ordinary people to challenge religion, tradition, history, culture, literature and society. It is said that when Rome was burning, Nero was fiddling. But some historians point out that it would not have been possible for Nero to fiddle when Rome was burning because fiddles did not exist at the time of Nero. They were yet to be invented. Be that as it may, Ramanujan sees the poets as Nero's. Ramanujan sees the Tamil poets as Nero's who fiddle while the Madurai city, while the city of Madurai is getting submerged in the floods of the Waikai in the floods of the Vaigai. We now move to the fourth stanza. He was there for a day when they had the floods. Who is this he? The he could be the speaker himself. Of course, Ramanujan was at that time living in Madurai and there was no need for him to go to Madurai for a day in order to see the floods. But one should not confuse the private person that is the poet 
and the persona of the poet in the poem. The two need not always be identical. In fact, frequently it is not identical. So, he could be the poet himself who has gone to Madurai during the floods in order to see the Y guy. A better explanation would be that he is a contemporary Tamil poet. The Tamil poet wants to write a poem about the Y guy and he can sing only of the floods. So when he hears the floods, he goes to the city of Madurai to see the flooding Y guy and become inspired to write poetry. Whoever he be, he is in Madurai and the Y guy is flooding. The city of Madurai seems to have been overcome by a hysteria of excitement. People everywhere talk of the inches rising. With great excitement the people speak, the people discuss how the water is rapidly rising, inch by inch. The precise number of cobble steps run over by the water, rising on the bathing places. Cobble steps. The steps in the bathing guards, which are paved with cobbles, or round stones. The precise number of cobble steps run over by the water rising in the bathing places. This is the topic which is excitedly discussed everywhere. The exact number of steps in the bathing places that has been run over rapidly by the rising water, by the flooding Vaigai. And the weight carried off three village houses, one pregnant woman and a couple of cows named Gopi and Brinda as usual. With great excitement the people talk of the damage caused by the floods how three village houses have been carried off. The flooding waters carry away three village houses and the people are excited and they talk about it. Not only three village houses but also one pregnant woman. Not only three village houses and one pregnant woman, also a couple of cows named Gopi and Brinda as usual. So now, the flooding waters of the Vaigai have caused tremendous damage. Three houses have been carried away. One pregnant woman has been carried away. And a couple of cows have been carried away. And the cows are named Gopi and Brinda as usual. When I, when I read the poem for the first time, I was baffled by these lines, especially by the concluding words. Why as usual? Why does the poet say as usual? No, I think I understand. The poet wants to make it clear that the discussion is not based on facts. Nobody is genuinely concerned about the damage caused by the floods. They talk in vague terms. They are excited because the suffering is caused not to them but to others. And very vaguely they say that two cows have been carried away and every year 
they give the same names. The point is that the people do not bother to check their facts. They are not in the least concerned about the suffering caused by the floods. And they repeat the same stories year after year. How the flooding Waigai carried away three village houses, one pregnant woman and a couple of cows. And the cows always had the same name, names Gopi and Brinda. Thus, there is a further expansion in the concept of callousness in the fourth stanza. The concept of callousness introduced in the first stanza. In the first stanza, we understand that the poets are callous. In the second stanza, we understand that the poets are not alone in their callousness. The administrators are also callous. The third stanza reinforces the callousness of the poets. And in the fourth stanza, we find that the entire society is callous. It is not merely the poets, it's not merely, merely the administrators. It appears that the people of Madurai are celebrating the floods and the damage caused by the floods, the enormous damage caused by the floods. Thus, the concept of callousness introduced in the poem in the first stanza undergoes a tremendous expansion by the time we reach the fourth stanza and the entire Tamil society is pictured as extremely callous, as cruelly callous, celebrating the floods of the Vaigai and the enormous damage and the tremendous damage caused by the floods.